So now we're going to talk about experimental design. So experimental design is basically the way that participants are used in different levels of the independent variables. Um, they may be uh, allocated to all or only one of the levels of independent variable. Um, there are three experimental designs, the independent measure design, um, repeated measure design, and match pairs design. It's pretty scientific so far, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Experimental which particip participants are allocated to level of independent variables. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't get it. <laughs> what does it mean by like allocated? So um, basically the experimental design is um, basically the way that how, how researchers place the participants into which conditions. Okay. Can you give me one example? Um, okay. Well, there are three types. So why don't we take a look at each one and then I'll give you um, oh, okay. each of this yeah. example. Okay, so with the independent measures design, so it also known as between groups design. So in an independent measures design, a separate group of participants is used to for each um, experimental conditions or level of the independent variable, which means that the data of each level of the IV is independent because it is not related to any other data. It has come from different people. Mm -hmm. So know that this is a different use of word independent from the independent variables. They're not the same meaning. The fact that why it's independent because like they have different groups of participants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you um, take a look on the like picture on the left, you will see that the group A has 10 students, right? And then the group B or the condition B has another like 10 different like sets of students. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This is what um, they mean by allocated, like which group or conditions you've been placing in. Okay. Uh -huh. So um, for instance, if we want to know whether seeing aggressive model is on TV has like long-term effects. We could um, expose a group of young people to aggressive TV and then wait for them to grow older. We sh should not do that because it's unethical, but it's just <laughs> an example. Okay. Okay. <laughs> However, it would be much quicker to compare two groups of adults, like in comparisons to one group, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so one group who had been like allowed to watch aggressive TV as children and one group who had not been allowed to. So this second example would be an independent major design. So this, this design is actually good because the participants only encounter experimental setting once. So they are less likely to get tired or like wear, like wear off more. Um, and also there are unlikely to notice or respond to clues that might tell them the aims of the experiment or which we, uh, we call it demand characteristics. Um, however, one problem is that there might be individual differences between participants that could influence the findings or the results. Um, for example, in a study of the effect of noise on dreams, other people who normally remember their dreams well might end up in the no noise group. Mm -hmm. if, if so, it might look as though noise prevent the dreams recall when in fact it had little effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This risk can be reduced by the random allocation of participants to different conditions. This is um, like spread possible differences between individuals across the levels of the IV. So to randomly allocate um, participants, each person is given a number and the numbers are then randomly divided into two groups or it could, if it's easier than that, you could do the rocky, um, lucky draw. Mm -hmm. um, can be done by telling each participant a number, putting numbers into the hand, lucky draw, using a random number generator on a computer if you have that much of the budget mm -hmm. you know, to do the same thing. 
So this one is the repeated measure design. So in repeated measures design, the same group of people participate in every level of the IV. Do you see the difference from this one and the previous one? Yeah. Uh -huh. So to help you remember, um, think of the participants repeating their performance under different conditions. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, for example, a study looking at the effect of um, doodling on learning. Um, we could count the number of words recalled in the same group of people when they did doodle and they did not. The, the main advantage um, of a repeated measure design is that each person acts as their own baseline. So any differences between participants um, that could influence their performance and therefore the DV will affect both levels on the IV in the same way. Mm -hmm. So individual differences are therefore unlikely to bias the findings. So let's imagine that in our experiment on doodling, one person was generally very quick to learn and another quite slow because we all, always have like the fast learner and slow learners, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So in an independent measures design, this might cause a problem if they were in a different groups, but using a repeated measures design makes the differences between them less important as both could show an improvement with doodling. So individual differences between participants are called participant variables. The name is self-explanatory. So these variables such as like age, gender, personality, or intelligence can affect scores on the DV, which count as like extraneous variables. It is therefore important to make sure that these variables do not hide or exaggerate differences between levels of the IV. This is why it calls like within group or within subject designs because same groups of people doing experiments like again and again just under different conditions. So as each, in, as each individual participates in every level of the IV, they will perform the same or similar tasks two or more times, which can lead to a problem of the order effect. So the order effect is basically the practice and fatigue effects or the consequences of participating in study more than once which can cause changes in performance between conditions that are not due to the IV, so can be obscure and affect on the DV. So the repeated performance could cause participants to improve because um, they have encountered the task before. So there's a, a practice effects there. You know, a practice effects is a situation where participants' performance improve because they have experienced the experimental task more than once. Mm -hmm. So basically you get used to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This matters too um, because participants who were like tested on a condition second um, would perform better than those who did it first, obviously. Mm. Um, alternatively, um, repetition might make performance worse, perhaps if they were bored or tired, which is called like fatigue effect. So addition, additionally, um, the participants see both levels of the IV and have more opportunity to work out what is being tested, so are more likely to respond to demand characteristics. Order effects, um, so again, with demand characteristics, refers to... Um, features of experimental situation which give away the aims. Um, they can cause participants to try to change their behavior to match their beliefs of what is supposed to happen and reduce the validity of the study. So the, the other effects can be solved into two ways. One, by randomization. And two, culture balancing. So imagine and experiment with two conditions, learning while listening to music and learning with no music. In a randomization, participants are randomly allocated to do either condition like music, um, followed by no music, vice versa. As mm -hmm. some we do each like order, any advantage of doing one of the conditions first will probably be even out in the results. So to be more certain that possible effects are even out, counterbalancing can be used. So what's a counterbalancing, right? Um, counterbalancing is used to overcome order effects in a repeated measures design where 
um, each possible orders of levels in the IV is performed by a different subgroup or participants, which can be described as an ABDA design as half the participants do condition A and then B and then half do B and then A. You get it? Mm -hmm. So it's like they just swap it around mm -hmm. like randomly. Mm -hmm. A sometimes B A. Okay. Yeah, to, to avoid the or the effect. The fatigue. And also the fatigue effect. Uh. So why, the, pra the practice effect. So long. Which one? <laughs> no, just like the whole thing seems very <laughs> long, but then when you understand it, it's like only three set, only like three words in a sentence. In well, a nutshell, academic basically. world, <laughs> academic world, they prefer to use like big multi-syllabic words to make themselves smart. Oh, I hope I don't have to write like that. Oh well, you have to write keywords. <laughs> well, but like to go like scientifically you know to, to sound smart and all <laughs> well some of them are like self-explanatory you know, like practice effects is where participants performance like improved because they've been practiced from the previous like task okay. and fatigue effect is where like participant performance like decline because like they get bored or like get tired of it and then the participants wearables just basically individual differences between participants. Okay, let's review again. Repeated measure is basically the same group of people doing different conditions. Okay. But independent, just two different sets, or it could be more than two, just different groups of people doing different tests. So independent is just basically two groups with completely different people and um, with its own, like, each group has different um, independent variables and the repeated the repeated measure design is just basically the same people with different um, IV. Mm -hmm. yeah. So next is the mesh pair design. The mesh pair designs is basically an experimental design which participants are arranged into pairs. Hmm. Name is self-explanatory. <laughs> Match pair is always, always be the pairs. It's not gonna be like three people or like single person. So, however, each pair is similar um, in ways that they are important to study. One member of each pair um, has to perform a different level of the IV. Well, the pros advantage of that is like it reduces participant variables because you know you have to pair up with the participants. Um, it avoids other effects. So cardio balancing is not necessary. However, it is like really time consuming. Like, okay, with the independent variable, it's pretty time consuming, but this one is very time consuming. And it's also, it's impossible to match people exactly um, unless they are like identical, identical twins. Yeah. This one, um, the match pairs design is very popular to when you want to taste like identical twins. So it's pretty exclusive for identical twins, because you know, they're twins and identical. Mm -hmm. Duh. <laughs> Do you have any questions? No. So are you cool? Yeah, I'm cool. Okay. So here is the table summary of the experimental design. With the strengths and weaknesses. Let's summarize a bit. Okay. So with the independent measures, um, the strength, you better understand it because it might be on the exam. <laughs> okay. Okay. So with the uh, independent measures design, basically the different participants use in each level. So there are there are no other effects. Mm -hmm. And then participants see only one level, which reduce the effects of demand characteristics because they don't know the actual aim. Because we did not give them enough task to do for them to figure out. And then we can do um, random assignments or random allocation to levels of the IV can reduce the effects of like individual differences for participants variables. However, it's, well, one is time consuming um, and you need a lot of people. Mm. And also um, participants variables can um, distort the result if there are important individual differences between participants in the different levels of the IV. 
So yes, well, of each of them, each of these have like pros and cons. Anyway, um, repeated measures. Well, you don't need that much of people comparing to the mesh pairs and dependent variables. Uh, participants variables are unlikely to distort. You know. But you need to do the counter balancing to reduce the order effect. It also like less time consuming. Order effects could distort the result. However, as these um, participants see the experimental task more than once, they might um, they might be either um, acquire the um, fatigue effect or the um, experimental ef um, effect. With the match pair, you see only one level re reducing the demand characteristics. There's no other effects because you only pair up people. Participants' variables are less likely to distort. Um, however, the similarity between pair is limited because, you know, by the matching process. Mm -hmm. The availability of the matching pairs could be limited as, as well. Um, normally, they do within, like, with a small, like, sample size. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it depends on, like, what are you trying to study or experiment.